Hello. In this video, I'll be covering the subject of shadows, why they are important, some key points about them you may not have thought of, and how to paint them. These topics mostly apply to painting shadows in general, though there are one or two that only apply to watercolour painting. Shadows can be difficult for new artists to paint. Often it's because they get the subjects of reflections and shadows mixed up somehow. Other times it's just because shadows have a lot to know about them. Also, as shadows are often the last stage of a painting, especially a watercolour painting, the student can worry about ruining their good work. Here are some reasons why shadows are important. Firstly, without a shadow, objects like trees, figures, buildings and cows can look like they are disconnected from the land beneath them. Shadows connect shapes. Isolated shapes can be combined into a more pleasing shape by using shadows. They can make simple shapes more interesting. A tree will look better with a shadow under it. They can create light in a painting. A dark shadow next to a light shape will make your painting appear to have more light in it. And shadows help direct the viewer's eyes around your artwork. Let us clear up the difference between shadows and reflections. People often refer to shadows when they really mean reflections and vice versa. The key point is to remember that shadows are away from the light while reflections are always towards the viewer, which is usually painted down the paper. How do we paint shadows? First, let us look at the colour of shadows. They always have some of the native colour of the object that they lay on. For instance, if the shadow is on grass, it will have some of the grass colour as part of it. However, the colour will not be as bright as it is in full light. Other colours will also be present, and it may also be changed by reflected and projected lights. For instance, why do shadows often have blue in them? If there is a blue sky above the shadow, the blue light modifies the shadow colour. However, in the case of a grey overcast sky, the shadow will lean more towards that colour and not blue or violet. If you have colourful objects next to one another, for example an orange or lemon next to a white vase or on a white tabletop, some of the light that hits the fruit will reflect into their shadow. Another example is where bright coloured sunlit buildings will reflect light into shadow areas around them. Now let us look at various edges of shadows. They are rarely sharp edged, though they can appear sharp from a distance. Even a shadow cast by a solid object, such as a lamppost, gets softer as it moves away from the post. This effect is called diffraction. Shadows help create the form of an object, such as a body or a head. These form of shadows are soft edged, while cast shadows have a more defined edge. The tone of a shadow is very important as well. The laws of atmospheric perspective also apply to them. This means that shadows of distant objects are lighter and duller than those of similar objects that are closer to the viewer. For instance, trees in the distance have lighter and duller shadows than the same trees in the foreground. Filtered light, such as that produced when light passes through leaves, will create lighter shadows, while darker shadows are caused by more solid objects. Shadows are very important for creating light in our paintings. On an overcast day, they are very light and indistinct, while on a bright sunny day, they are more sharply defined and darker relative to their surroundings. Shadows under objects are usually darker as they are not lit by light from the sky. For example, the shadow under a car is darker than the shadow cast by the car blocking the light to its side. 
shadows of a person or animal walking or running will touch the foot that is touching the ground, but not one that is moving above it. We will now look at how to paint a shadow on grass using the information I've already covered. The edges of shadows on the ground, especially on grass, are never a straight edge. They will have a variety of edges from sharp to soft. Grasses and other plants at the edge of a shadow will have some parts in shade and others in light. Also within the shadow area, some edges will be sharper and others softer. In a rural landscape, these effects are partly due to shadows being created by a mix of solid branches, semi-transparent leaves, gaps within the foliage and to the variations on the ground itself. It might have patches of bare ground mixed with grasses of different heights and colours. There may also be rocks on the ground. Wind blowing through tree foliage and diffraction will also soften some of these, some of these edges. To create this soft edge effect, I randomly wet the foreground area with dabs of water before laying down the shadow. This will give shadows more variation of edge and tone. When the brush hits a pre-wet area, a soft edge will be created, which is also lighter in tone as the water on the paper will dilute the mixture on the brush. I also make use of dry brush strokes to add another edge element. Dry brush strokes are not as defined as a solid sharp edge, but are more definite than a wet on wet passage. As artists, we use these edge variations to create more interesting visual effects for our viewers. Dry brush strokes and soft wet on wet passages help the viewer connect with our work by adding their own perception of what these shapes mean. Think about people looking at clouds. Some may see a rabbit, while another sees something different. Remember, as artists, one of our jobs is to create a visual feast for the eyes. So let's have a look at this shadow. We've got shadows for these trees and in the you know, distant cows and that. I've mixed my, the strength of my mixture here for this foreground area and shadows also conform to aerial perspective, meaning they're lighter and softer as they move into the distance. So I'm going to pick up some of this shadow here, and then I dip my brush halfway into, into uh, clean water. And that'll be my lighter tones. Take out most of the paint. I don't want this to be too wet. There, and do the same. Something like that. And these cows here, it's stronger. This side, we've got a strong shadow. I'm 
I'm going to make this distant shadow just a bit darker underneath the trees. This is just to help connect the trees to the ground a little bit better. So if you look at this shadow shape, it's sort of lighter here, then it gets darker here. It's got some sharper looking edges and then some sort of softer ones. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I pick up some clean water or cleanish water and in some areas just dab some water. Just like that. Great. And this part here becomes a little bit trickier because we've got negative shapes, bright against dark. And all I do for that, as uh, you'll see in a minute, that can sit there for a bit. And I'll just dilute this fraction. We'll bring this down a bit more. Should that will do. And then here, let's get my fan brush, pick up some paint. Um, I don't want, don't want a lot of paint in my brush. It's using the edge. Drag some of that paint down. But we want to leave some of the plants highlighted. Here I'm going to soften some of these edges. and try to leave some dry brush strokes as well. They make it more interesting. Along this edge here, um, pick up a little bit of paint. This has been sitting there for a while. I can't have a lot of paint in my brush or it'll, um, I'll get sort of like a mini cauliflower there. Just flicking the shadow up. into little, I think the grass is sticking up.
This is more like a just a notation saying, hey, there's some grasses here. Vary the colour a bit. Here I'm getting a little bit of a cauliflower. All I'm going to do for that is just attack it before it dries too much. Just get rid of it that way. Make it a little bit darker under the cow, just like when you're painting a car, the shadow underneath the cow will be a little bit darker. It's just because it's blocking, the body of the cow is blocking the light coming through, whereas this shadow is getting some light from the sky. And it's just drying a little bit muddy on me, so I'm going to spray it. Just to re-wet that area and let some of that paint flow again. And actually, I'm going to bring another shadow across here. I hope this video has given you more insight into why shadows are so important and how you can paint them in a more interesting manner. If you have enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and press the notification bell to be informed of each new video I produce. Also, if you have any questions on the topics I covered today, please let me know in the comment section below. I look forward to seeing you for my next video. Bye for now.